Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Super excited. I've got one of my favorite people on the show and one of my new favorite people. We've got Wendy Cowan. She's a global real estate practitioner, according to her title right there. Dear friend, she's an amazing advocate in the community, global community, really. Uh, and she has introduced me to our special, special guest, Saul Terrazona, right? Terrazona, E-Jet, Aerospace. I'm fascinated by this topic. I did enough research to be dangerous, Saul, and we're going to learn all about what you do. Welcome to the show. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Thanks for having us, Ted. Fantastic. I was able, I was I'm able so to excited. I, I, I've been so excited to have Saul on. Of course, I love spending time with Wendy always. If you don't know Wendy, you can reach out to her, find her through me. Uh, you can't miss her. She is global, and I mean that literally and figuratively. She's all over the place. Uh, but she said, you've got to talk to this gentleman, Saul Terrazona. So we're going to learn all about both of you, though, real quick. Wendy, we'll start with you ladies first. Tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll take a deep dive into Saul and all things Saul and Egypt. Sure. So just to keep it simple, you can find out about me on, on LinkedIn, Globally Wendy, keep it simple there. But how I got to meet Saul was by representing him at the International Property Show, to which I was a team leader last year for the 2022 uh, event, which was also Expo 2020 Dubai. So he was part of the portfolio that we presented and we had a booth and everybody was absolutely fascinated. So Saul, tell us why they were so fascinated. Yes. Yeah, so thank you, Wendy. You know, I love you at pieces and appreciate you. Saul, all right, it's all you, my friend. Tell us about you and then tell us about EJET Aerospace. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm very excited to be here with all of you. So what the most important thing that we got is we discovered a new propulsion system. So what is this? This is a new engine that is 100% electric, super high performance. It's like nothing in this world. I love it. So that's 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 a lot to take in, Saul. All right. So tell I us know. how you got into. How did you? Really quick, though, I think it's important. You weren't obviously born, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to be the eJet Aerospace professional. Tell us a little bit about your background and kind of how you got to eJet. But to be honest, I, I think I was born to be an aeronautical engineer. I was so excited about machines where I didn't have an aircraft to play with, but I did have a few cars. So I was a big fan. I became an engineer very early and I started working in very advanced technologies for government. So a bunch of defense, a few technologies here that they were absolutely new in the world, untested, unproven, the wild Western technologies. But I got the opportunity to learn about them, implement them, uh, work from different governments. I have the pleasure to live in Dubai. I have the pleasure to live in Europe, US, and here I'm speaking to you from Miami. Is that where you you are? Okay, Miami. Where are you originally from? I'm from Colombia. Colombia. Okay. See, see, Terrazona. I thought we were going with Italian. Or tell me about EJet because EJet obviously I had some people when I was kind of promoting uh the show people were like EJet so is that like a simulation this is real stuff because people didn't know they're like oh is this a new airline uh is this a is this a new way to travel via AI uh so tell them a little bit more about it give us a skinny so the, the name is actually coming from E, the electric. E jet is like the jet engines that we all use on the airline every day, right? So that's E jet aerospace. So why is it aerospace? Because actually our technology is capable not to take us to a space, but to be used in different planets. And so, Wendy, what was it about Saul that you uh, felt like, all right, this guy's on to something? Tell us a little bit about how that relationship developed. Sure. So uh, I'm I'm very interested in sustainability and the sustainable development goals is something that I always advocate for and try to incorporate into business plans and things that I'm working on. And his uh, solution directly affects that. It helps save um, different, in, it gives transportation to the masses in a way that's sustainable because um, it is using clean energy and 
It also helps um, us reach places in global real estate or that are emerging markets. There's not always easy roads to get to places that are in new developments. So this will substantially help the executives and folks that need to travel back and forth uh, from Florida to the Caribbean, from Miami to Tallahassee in one, one skip. So I'll let Sal tell you some more. Yes, tell us more, tell us more. So look, we, we have been doing this for 22 years with not enough capital, just with our, our, our own funds. We got seven national awards in Colombia. We got one international award as the best technology ever filed from the entire Latin America. This was given deal. by the ADC. It is definitely a big deal, especially because who give it to us is the nothing less than the World Intellectual Property Organization in Switzerland. It's like the United Nations of intellectual property. It's amazing. Tell us how it's going to change. Wendy, both of you, tell us how it's going to change the way we look at aviation and how it's going to change the way that we look at travel. Because obviously this sustainability is not something you normally think about when you think of aerospace or sure. aviation. So, so I want to I start with what, what's in the market today are, are small jets and also helicopters are what we're using for short range transportation. So think of how inefficient those are and how expensive that is. So what's the alternative, Sal? Well, the alternative is thanks to our propulsion system, we, we have a few applications of it. So what we get is a technology. Just to put your mind in the right place, a technology is as big as the internet that we are using today. Yeah, and another technology is AI. Another technology is 5G. So we got a technology and we implemented in a few different parts. The first application we thought about because we want to make aviation affordable for everyone. And that's the, 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 the Pivoting point of having aviation or not is actually because it's expensive. So not everybody can can afford to own an aircraft, or not everybody can afford to ride a helicopter for one hour and six hundred dollars or so. So with our propulsion system, we enable affordability on aviation. We can pick up and drop anybody. Uh, our cost of operation is ridiculously low. It's around one hundred twelve dollars. That's including salary, energy costs. Everything is electric, so that's super low. That's so the cost low. to produce one aircraft will be around one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. This is on the wow. assembly line. So, and the, why is all this again because of the propulsion system? Are you getting pushback, Saul, at all? I'm curious from the aviation industry as a whole because. You know, they're kind of a dinosaur. Uh, no offense to all my aviation friends, but they, you know, they, they kind of do things the old fashioned way. It's kind of been the same way for a very long time. So we you bring this technology in and disrupt what I feel like the aviation world. Uh, have you gotten support? Are you having to kind of push through? What, what's been the reaction? The reaction has been not very supportive. Yeah, because at some point where they're, they're going to recognize that this is the pivoting point, this is the technology that changes what aviation was and the new aviation. Yeah. But the good thing is that, look, we are the people that want to make aviation affordable. So part of the affordability is being part of the ecosystem, which, by the way, I'm very thankful to belong for so many years, for 15 years. So. Our idea is not to step onto the big toes and just take the market away. For example, I would love to get conversations with Bell helicopters so they can produce our aircrafts. They have what we don't have. They have the facilities. They have the experience producing aircrafts. We are the scientists, people, the physicists, the mathematicians, the engineers that design something new. So we're very grateful for people that help us build it so we can mass produce it and get to economies of scale, of course. Wow. And we, by the way, we don't need to get to economies of scale to get this, this cost that I just told you, right? So it will be even better if we get to economies of scale. The cost is almost mind blowing because we all know how many millions of dollars uh, it costs. We've heard it, we've read it to produce one airplane, one Boeing, I'm not picking on them, but one particular aircraft. And so the numbers that you're 
uh, saying are actually, it's almost too hard to believe, which I love, which means you're on to something, in my opinion. I think it's so awesome. And I think that uh, the sustainability uh, for a lot of people is really the wave of the future. That's what so many people are going for. That's what uh, maybe not so much in the U.S. We're a little behind on some of the sustainability initiatives, but we do have very active people like the Wendy's in the world, uh, like Global uh, Council and like a lot of the initiatives that I'm part of where we see the value and we see that the only way for this to move forward is for us to kind of all get behind it. So what's next? What's on the horizon for you and EJET in 2023? Well, to be honest, we're focusing 100% on the fundraising for 10 million. This is the capital we need, which is seed capital, which is, by the way, one of the challenges that we got is that this is a large seed capital um, and the fee with an investor is not the best. So a seed capital normally is $10,000 and here we're talking about $10 million, right? So that fee is very hard to find. So these programs, like uh, thanks to you, that and your show, these get us to the, the ears and eyes of the people that can afford them. By the way, we don't need all the 10 million. So this 10 million is to buy parts, buy, this is not for Ferraris and Lamborghinis as everybody thinks. This okay. is to buy parts, pay salaries, get a shop, get a wise people on it, start working, producing the, by the way, we already finished design. Design is done. We just need to wow. build the parts, assemble it together. That, by the way, it's very few parts. I will tell you that it's less than 300 parts together. Wow. The full aircraft. The full aircraft. What's what? exciting, too, is that handicapped folks can be employed to be the assemblers. I love it. 100%. What's the, uh, what's the long range goal? Let's say we get your 10 million. Are we going to space? Are we. Are we going to be more, are you going to be international? Is that the goal is, is, uh, or is it going to be more regional for a while? I, I think it's, I think people want to kind of know a little bit of the long range thought process. Definitely. So, so this capital will take us for two years and, and do all the process to have one full size aircraft and already on the certification process with whom, where the investors will decide. So we're very flexible, including even in terms. The, sec the next part will be where we actually got the certification or even if we don't get the certification, to be honest, because if we don't get the civil aviation certification, we just go straight to defense and that's it. For that anyway, we need a full EJIT Aerospace Center. This EJIT Aerospace Center, depending where we do it, which the investors will be able to tell us, will be voting to, to tell us where, because there's so much value we bring. We yes. create jobs, we manufacture aircrafts, made in here, sell to anybody. It is amazing the value that we bring. So that EJIT center is gonna have the assembly line. We won't want to build it, but we don't want to produce the parts. Somebody else, three manufacturers are gonna produce the parts, we're gonna receive them, right? So that assembly line will never stop. We assemble aircrafts in one side, at the same time, we're gonna be on the training center, training pilots, training technicians, training assemblers, admin, engineers, etc., etc. In the other side, we're gonna need logistics. In the other side, we're gonna, of course, continue the research and development to, to create more machines, more applications of this amazing technology, which they don't stop in the air, by the way. We can do vehicles for under the water at, at, the, at the level, at, at the sea water level, above, like gliding above the water. We can even, why is it aerospace? Is because we can make a vehicle for Mars. Wow. Not the moon, Mars. <laughs> I need some air density. I need some air density. So, so, so Mars will be amazing. We don't need oxygen. We don't need prepare. We don't need many things. So it's amazing. So that's what, what we're gonna. That's gonna be the play on the after the two years. That's where as soon as we got at the six month period after we got the ten million, we will be able to show the world that we built a propulsion system that push X amount of force up. With that, I can just put it in an any platform and make it fly safely, very economically. I'm it's, very, it's very, amazing, very high Wendy. performance. No wonder you were excited about having Saul. I, I'm 
I'm so fascinated uh, with anything that is this technologically advanced, but also the sustainability is near and dear to my heart. And I think it is for a lot of us. I'm just excited to be to be kind of learning all about this at ground zero with you. Yeah, when you um, hear the Jetsons, that's kind of what it makes me. Yes, think. very Jetsons. Mm -hmm. um, sustainability is is such a big word, but I love the that there's that you have created your own your unique propulsion system. Uh, words that I haven't probably said since I don't know high school physics. I don't know what I would have said those for, but it was something. But I love the I, first of all, I love your energy too, Saul, and I mean that. Uh, you sound so excited about it. So how can investors, by the way, investors, if you're watching, uh, people who are interested in sustainability and aerospace and eJet, you should definitely reach out to Wendy and or Saul. All right. Speaking of that, what's the best way they can reach you, Saul, learn more about you, maybe talk about that 10 million? Uh, how can they reach out to you? So yeah, on the website, we have all the contacts. We are on every single social media that exists. Wendy will be the best, the best to approach. So we can filter everything through her. Yes. Uh, and Wendy, she's been an amazing how do we support you? She is an amazing right. supporter. You can it? reach me. Awesome. My phone number is 407-276-6254. And email is wendycowensells at gmail.com. And of course, you guys can reach out to me and I will put you in touch with them. Uh, Wendy, I think I would love to get uh, you and Saul at our um, entrepreneurial club that we have downtown that's very sustainability oriented and has a lot going on there with a lot of investors. So we will talk about that afterward. If you guys have an interest or you know somebody, I know all my, my sustainability people watch the show. So I am excited and I'm going to share the show with several of them directly. Uh, I just think what you're doing, Saul, is amazing and your energy, you and Wendy, what a great team. So Saul Terrazona, Wendy Cowan, thank you guys for being on the show. Ejet aerospace y'all isn't that exciting i don't know why i'm so excited about it it's it is fascinating to me well uh, ted i promise you a maiden flight when oh, a maiden flight. i would be honored to be on a maiden flight <laughs> i want to get you there saul for sure and wendy all right y'all thank you so much for being on the show ejet.tech the website is scrolling across the bottom there. And of course, if you want to reach out to Wendy or Saul, I can get you to them. Y'all have a great one. I love this show so much. Thank you, guys. See Thank you, you Ted. Bye, everybody. Thank